when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end of Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. For Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead.
as we silence our hearts, let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace so that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved we may not be overcome by this trial but we may hold fast trusting in your goodness and mercy Assure us, O Lord, our God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life. Lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us through the same Jesus Christ our Lord amen we are met in this solemn moment to commend Aitha Lorraine calendar into the hands of the Almighty God our Heavenly Father who sent his son Jesus Christ to be our Redeemer by whose stripes we are healed and in whose name alone we have salvation. Let us then recall to mind the life of our deceased sister as I invite Gilbert Rowe to come and share with us the eulogy and then it will be followed by a tribute in song by Trinity Clark. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Calendar family, I would like to say welcome and on behalf of all the families represented. First of all, I am not Gilbert Rowe. Uh, I know Gilbert very well, uh, but unfortunately, he was unable to be here. My name at christening is Nello Bino. And some of you in the congregation will know me from my exploits in the hotel business. It's an honor and privilege to be asked to read the eulogy on behalf of Aitha Lorraine Callender. Before I do that, I am going to ask you to bow your heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for this moment in time that we can come and say to you, thanks for the life of your daughter. Give her strength as she goes to her holy resting ground. Father, comfort the families involved at this time, and may they continue to live up to her expectations and her ideals. We thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh. Morning Church, Aitha Lorraine Callender was born on March 13, 1943, 
the second born to Mural and Ivan Calendar, and the sister of eight siblings, Carl, Henderson, Janice, Morris, Barbara, Joanne, Hazel Dean, and Cecile. Ida received her early education at St. Giles Primary. Upon leaving school, she worked at Wise Foods where she packed shells, but for her, this was not enough. She aspired to further her education and make something of herself. With this in mind, she migrated to England where she pursued a nursing career earning a distinction of registered nurse and later adding midwifery to her achievements. She furthered her education in accounting and was also a qualified accountant. She was also an avid reader. After many years in England, she returned home and continued to offer her nursing skills where she worked at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, where she gained the respect of many patients for whom she cared, often spoke of them kindly and gently in the way she cared for them. Aitha loved her mother dearly, and by extension her siblings. While she was living abroad, she made sure that Mama lacked nothing. She wrote to Mama on a regular basis, telling her of her experiences and inquiring of her siblings, never, forgot to, never forgetting to send those English pounds, and some of you would know how valuable the pounds were back in the day. And I know, because I did the same. This money ensured that Christmas for us was always a ham season, and that I can attest. Now, I thought it was very English. She could handle a knife and fork with great expertise. Imagine how we break down with laugh when she sat at the dinner table one day eating ackies with a knife and fork. <laughs> well, those seeds were as clean as if she'd had them in her mouth. She thought and insisted that her siblings and by extension Erica used them. Maurice shared that she might brought her own white handle set. But you know, in those days, the white handle set was the thing for a house. On one of her visits back home, she undertook to prepare the Sunday meal. No one could go in the kitchen. Cooking started around 8.30. Places were prepared at the dinner table with knives and forks, and the, meals, and the meal was finished around 3 o'clock. Unfortunately, Daddy Ivan was not impressed because the meal did not include rice. Well, you know, we've got to have rice on Sundays. It is not a Sunday meal unless there is rice. He could be heard saying, what is this? You spend the whole day in the kitchen cooking this? Ma, go back and get something for me to eat. Nevertheless... She said, Ma never gave up her, her kitchen again, so she never was able to go in the kitchen and cook. The English training in Aitha meant that she did not shout. As memory serves, we don't recall her hearing her shout. So one day, when two of her siblings were calling each other across the road, she admonished them. And the most, don't you know it is dignified for ladies not to shout. As a joke among us, we would shout at each other for whatever reason. Someone was quickly to remind us is it's not dignified to shout. I to love and appreciated nice things. And so a second thought was never given when making her purchases. She was a dresser and she could make sackcloth look like satin. When she stepped out, you had no choice but to admire her outfits, which were well coordinated and fitting to a tee. Highlighting her smooth, dark skin, it was because of her sense of style that she earned the nickname Miss Titty. 
One day, Joanne and Hazel were going into town, and Isa did not like what they were wearing and asked if they were going looking for Titi and Tatty, hence the nickname. Over time, Isa moved over to Jean's house. Here, her nursing skills were put to use when she assisted Aunt Sylvie and Aunt Pearl's caregiving until their deaths. Despite her health challenges, the most concerning being her mental health, she remained true and caring to her, her siblings, who were all shocked and devastated by her sudden passing on the 4th of July this year. It was only on Saturday, July the 2nd, when she adamantly told one of her siblings that she would not be sitting in the Jeep while she was shopping for, for her, while she was shopping for her because she was going into the supermarket herself to choose the items that she need. I passed away as she lived, quietly and peaceful with a glimmer of a smile. Special mention must be made to two of her siblings, Carl and Maurice, who unfortunately could not be here physically present today. But we know, thanks to technology, that they are. We have many memories of a loving sister, a caring aunt, a great aunt, who will be missed greatly by them as well as our many friends. And all of us in some way can attest to her loving kindness and the person and that she was. And we give God thanks to have been able to share her life with us. May she rest in peace, may, may she rest in peace, sis, and rise in glory. Thank you all very much. Firstly, just want to extend my condolences to my granddad and Auntie Barbara, and we just know that she's in a better off place than this world, so this song is for her. It's not a dream God will make all things new That day Gone is the curse From which she stumbles and fell Evil is banished to eternal no more nights, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again, and praises to the great I am we will live in the light of the risen Lamb. 
see all around all the nations bow down to sing the only sound is the praises to Christ our King slowly the names from the book are read I know the King so you see there's no need no need to dread no more nights no more pain no more tears never crying again and praises to the great I am she will live in the light of the risen lamb see over there there's a mansion oh that's prepared just for her where she will live with her Savior eternally there will be no more no Thank you. Thank you for your ministry, Trinity. Now we will hear from the Word of God. In humble trust, we will listen to Troy, read for us Psalm 23, followed by the Epistle of Revelation, chapter 21, 1 to 7, read by Pat Callender. And the third reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6 and 27, read by Cheryl Grant. And we shall stand for the reading from the Gospel. Morning. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Whilst we're waiting on the uh, Bible, um, good morning, folks. Um, for those left behind, this is a time of sorrow and mourning. For those who've passed to higher service, is the time for celebration. Our reading when the Bible gets here, will be taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. Thank you. Revelations. 21 verse 1 then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more and I saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying see the home of God is among mortals he will dwell with them as their God they will be his peoples and God himself will be with them he will wipe every tear from their eyes death will be no more Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. Verse 5. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Uh, before I conclude, let me add the final verse of Revelations and, of course, this Holy Bible. It can be found at Revelations chapter 22, verse 21, and is a greeting well recognized by those of the Christian faith. 
It reads, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you. morning church the gospel is being read this morning from st. John chapter 14 I'm reading from verse 1 to 6 and 27 let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the word giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Here ends the reading of the gospel.
seated and let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Sovereign God, in the quiet of this morning hour, we bow before you. We give you thanks for the life of your daughter, Aitha, and for her witness through her profession. We give you thanks, Lord God, that you have given to us your word, a word that is a light to our path and a lamp unto our feet. A word, Lord God, that comes to us in season. And so now we shall meditate on your word. Thank you that you will stay with us in the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight for you are our strength and you are our redeemer amen as we have gathered to say farewell to Isa Lorraine calendar it is my prayer that each of you will know and feel God's presence to strengthen you as you continue to adjust to life without the presence of Aitha. I extend condolences to you as a family and pray that God's peace will attend each one of you. Condolences to Carl, Cameron, Maurice, Hazel Dean, Janice, Barbara, Joanne, Cecile, and all other members of the family. May God's peace be with you all. Be assured that the promise of God never to leave you alone is true. And God can be trusted. The God who is our refuge and strength in times like these is a promise keeping God. And so be assured that as you gather in the name of Jesus to celebrate the life that God gave to your family member, the living Lord Jesus stands in our midst. He stands ready to console and to comfort us and to meet each person at their point of need. We shall reflect this morning on a familiar and one of the best loved Psalms, Psalm 23. Through this Psalm, David shares his personal experience with God, with us. The psalm which speaks to us of green pastures and still waters as well as dark valleys and enemies and adversaries, adversities, covers all of life. The psalm brings consolation and peace to any soul that is overwhelmed and troubled. It gives a sense of comfort 
and of security to those who are going through and are experiencing the pain and grief of losing your loved one. Note that the psalmist has every confidence in God. He knows God. He speaks out of his experience with God. He has heard God's voice and he listened. He has followed the lead of God and he felt the care of God. In the stillness of this moment, listen to the claims of the psalmist. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. He leads me. He restores my soul. These assurances of the psalmist can be the experience of each of us who are gathered in the sanctuary this morning. The Lord cares for each of us as we go through this valley of loss today. Today, as we shed our tears, we can still look up to the God from whom all help comes. So whatever you may be going through, put it all in God's hands. For God offers to each of us his comforting hand and he's able to do all things. Jesus is your ever-present help. Indeed, may each of us, like the psalmist, claim God to be our refuge and strength. God himself invites us by faith to allow him or to lead us to places where each of us will experience him through the rest and restoration that the Lord God alone can give. He invites us to allow him to guide us in paths through which the name of the Lord alone can be glorified. We will be enabled to glorify his name because we recognize that in the peculiar situation that we face, in the peculiar situation in which we may find ourselves, only God can fix it. And we can give to him the glory due to his name. The psalmist teaches us the awesomeness of God. God who can move mountains, God who keeps us when we enter into the valleys of life, the valleys of sickness and the valleys of loss. And the Lord himself goes through that time with us. And we have the blessed assurance that we can have and have found in God, in Jesus Christ, the promises of God recorded multiple times in the book we name as the Bible. I, says the Lord, will never leave you or, nor, nor forsake you. Therefore, we are encouraged to always be with God. Because if his promise is that he will not leave us or forsake us, it means that we are in his presence. God who is faithful and tells us that we need not be anxious. 
because we can cast all of our anxiety on him. Jesus cares about each one of us as we mourn the loss of Aitha today. And there's a, a hymn writer who captures this thought about Jesus caring very well. Frank Graff asks the question, does Jesus care? Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth or song? As the burden press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long, then he answers his own question out of his sense of relationship with Jesus. He says, oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched by my grief. When the days are weary, the long night dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care for my deep grief? There's no relief. Through my tears, though my tears, sorry, flow all the night long. Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest one on earth to me? And my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks. Is it ought to him? Does he see? Then he says. Again he answers his own questions. About the one who is his savior. Oh yes he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched. By my grief or with my grief. When the days are weary. The long night dreary, I know my Savior cares. It is the awesome God who heals us when our hearts are broken. It is our awesome God who gives us strength when we are weakened. And it is up to us to choose the one who wills to reign in our hearts. Not just for a moment of grief, but forever. Here in this psalm, we meet the God of creation. Who in his wisdom has made everything which the psalmist is privileged to experience. And which brings joy to his life. This is the same God, the same Lord, whom we can also recognize and acknowledge today as the creator of all that we see in the natural world around us. We can see in each other the gift of God's life because we have his breath that he is giving to us right now. Isa's breath is lost in death, but we are breathing the breath of life. It is the same all-knowing, all-seeing, ever-present God who led the psalmist that is with us today to lead us. Lead us to our quiet spaces to restore each one of us who grieves and who share in this service of thanksgiving for your loved one, Aitha. Therefore, we are all encouraged on this day 
to express every confidence in the Spirit of God who will lead those who trust in Him to places where His peace is experienced. Indeed, it is the Lord of grace who will do for us now what we are unable to do for ourselves. We can be assured that as we lift our eyes to the hills, this Lord who cares for us, this Lord who made the heavens and the earth, is so mindful of each of us that he will meet us where we are to comfort us. He will help you as he helps me. And we have the evidence of him helping the psalmist to overcome this time of trial. He is your refuge to whom you can run. He is your strength in this your time of weakness. And none of us are alone because the Lord is in the midst. He's the risen Savior is standing in the sanctuary to, this morning to touch you wherever you are in your life. So the invitation is to trust him. Trust him as the psalmist did Trust him as you feel his unfailing love and care for you. And I believe that there's someone who needs to hear this again. The Lord, the good shepherd of the lives of those under his care, is concerned for each one of us, no matter where we are in our lives. He does not want us to hurt, and he does not want us to be lost. I believe that Aitha would have in her lifetime acknowledged who she was in the Lord. And that Jesus was her friend and savior. But now she has passed on. But today we are given the opportunity to embrace God's grace. Since life is a gift that is freely offered to us. A gift which we ought not to take for granted. Because as we breathe the breath of God now, we do not know what the future holds. Not tomorrow, but even today. This God, my friends, deserves to be the manager of our lives. He is the author and finisher of our faith. And he gives us faith to believe in him. Today we can raise our voices in songs of praise in memory of Aitha. We celebrate the one whose life is lost in death. But whose memory will live on in all of your hearts as long as you live. God continues to be faithful, dependable, and we can good give him our lives because he is the one who deserves our worship. Especially in this season, 
in these challenging and uncertain times. We have a testimony when we allow God to be God of our lives. Today, we can ensure that our hearts are so composed in him. So composed in this awesome God. Who, through the death and resurrection of his son, offers to Aether and all of us the gift of eternal life with him. He spared nothing that we may be saved and have an opportunity to be with him in eternity. He took away our sins, forgives us, gives us an opportunity for a new start. And I'm suggesting to us this morning that because life is so uncertain, we should follow the shepherd who gives us life and offers eternal comfort. Be bold to say that the Lord is your shepherd. Be bold to say that you shall not want. Be sure to say that he leads you as he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So my friends, in the, may the peace of God which passes all understanding be yours today as we continue to adjust to life without Isa. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we stand? And please turn with me to page four of the order of service. And let us affirm our faith in this God who has given us the gift of life. We say together the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Kindly be seated for prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God who has overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge 
of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of Aitha Lorraine Callender, whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessing her life has brought to others, for her service to her generation according to your will, and for every happy remembrance of her life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness which have followed her all the days of her life, that now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. Receive her into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We shall rise and sing together the hymn, It is Well with My Soul.
church say amen? amen. amen. It is well. It is well with each of our souls. Because we are connected uh, to the vine. Our relationship with Jesus makes that difference for us. Eternal God, who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made and have given your Son for our redemption, we commend our sister Aitha Lorraine to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto her and let perpetual light shine upon her. Together we say the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father,
receive the benediction. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Please remain where you are as the corpse leaves the church. For the wind passes over it and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children. As a father pities his children. So the Lord pities those who fear him, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children.
we know that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, Grant unto us safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Precious memories, unseen angels sent from somewhere to my soul. Hear they linger ever near me and the sacred past unfold. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In the stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold. Precious memories, unseen angels sent from somewhere to my soul how they linger ever near me and the sacred past unfold as i travel on life's pathway know not what the years may hold as i ponder Fonder, precious memories flood my soul. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In the stillness.
darkness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold. tonight 